Good evening, I'm Dini Tim Hoki, and this is TC Network English News Program. Today's top stories include Five MLAs walk out of Manipur Legislative Assembly after discussion on Kangla Resolution put down. Kuki in P. Tengnopol refute and condemns misinformation regarding recovery of arms and bombs at Elora Hotel Moray. Koto imposes 24 hour total shutdown in Kangpo P from 10 a.m. of 4th March to 10 a.m. of 5th March against adoption to abrogate SOO with UPF and KNO in the State Assembly. News in details. Five opposition MLAs walk out of the Manipur Assembly floor after an argument with the Speaker as a mark of resentment over the non-admission of a private member resolution on the Kangla Resolution. The resolution was proposed by all the sitting MLAs and MPs belonging to the Meite community on January 24. Under these, the lawmakers have pledged to protect the integrity of Manipur via a six-point charter of demands put forward to the center. As per India Today, the Kangla Declaration encompasses a set of demands to address issue of the state, including the implementation of the National Register of Citizens of the total of five Congress MLAs who excited the, the session. Four of them had sought permission for the admission of the private member's resolution on the Kangla resolution. However, the Manipur Assembly Speaker refused to admit the discussion during the private member resolution and proceeded with the sole discussion on the implementation of NRC raised by MLA Leisio at Tanghul Naga MLA. The Speaker had also warned the opposition against raising their voice against his decision and suggested that they could walk out if they were dissatisfied with the House proceedings. While Manipur Chief Minister Biran Singh alleged the walkout did not come in support of the move for NRC implementation, Congress objection to the allegation stating that they fully endorsed the move for the implementation of NRC. Walking out was not a move to boycott the assembly by the opposition, but a solidarity gesture against the defense of the rights of the opposition members, say Congress Legislator Leader O. Ibobi Singh, while speaking to media outside the assembly complex in Imphal. It is also unfortunate that the House did not provide an appropriate reply to the question raised by the opposition regarding the muting of members' mics during some arguments, he said. The opposition wants the House to adopt the resolution on the points met in the Kangla resolution, which also includes the implementation of NRC. However, it is unfortunate that the House denied the discussion, he further said. The Congress legislator also said that the proposal to admit discussions on private members' resolution on the Kangla resolution was met in advance, yet the Speaker did not admit it, which is very unfortunate. Meanwhile, Manipur CM Biran Singh hailed the Assembly steps in reaffirming the resolution and urged the central government to expedite the implementation of the NRC. He tweeted on Friday, today, the Manipur Legislative Assembly took a, a significant step by reaffirming our resolution passed on 5th August 2022. It is our firm belief that the implementation of the National Register of Citizens, NRC, in Manipur is crucial for safeguarding the interests of our state and contributing to the greater good of our nation. The decision to urge the Government of India to expedite the implementation of the NRC reflects our commitment to ensuring the security and integrity of Manipur. Notably, at its core, the NRC is an official record of those who are legal Indian citizens. It includes demographic information about all those individuals who qualify as citizens of India as per the Citizenship Act of 1955. 
The Cookie in P Technopol KIT condemned and rebuked the false, baseless, and concocted news broadcasted in the Mayday State media houses and national media, which said five assault rifles, 25 assault rifles, and additional superintendent of police operations Moray had recovered arms, ammunition, and warlike stores in the vicinity of Elora Hotel Moray. In its press statement, the Kugi in P Technopol KIT states that this piece of baseless news holds no credibility and accountability. It is a plan cooked and served by the like minded Assam Rifles personnel and made a terrorist to fulfill their malefied motive against the indigenous tribal of Moray and Technopol district, which is not tolerated by the KIT at any point of time. The Kuki in P Technopol is against such malefied motifs of Mayday terrorists led by N. Berensing, which he himself is aware of. The press release further say this cheap broadcasting of baseless propaganda by plan playing cat and mouse drama between themselves, like the Maydays are doing in Nepal, is not permitted in the Kuki Zoo areas by its bona fide inhabitants. And the KIT requests the gonna fight national me media to be aware of such type of cheap propaganda of the Mayday. This false information will affect peace and normalcy, and trying to destroy the image of Kukizo community is not acceptable and urges the concerned authorities to take unnecessary action against those officers who are involved in propagating false information. The Cookie in P Technopol also asks the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Government of India to ban and take penal action against Mayday media houses who propagate false, wrong and concocted and fabricated propaganda which cause unrest to the general population, added the release. The Committee on Tribal Unity is astounded at the vile attempt of N. Biren Singh and his cohorts in the State Assembly to divert, in general, the public from the imbroglio prevalent in India, in Infal, by adopting in particular a resolution to abrogate suspension of operations with UPF and KNO. The State Assembly's communalized resolution, adopted in the interest of one community, the Mayday community, accentuates the irrelevance of the government concerning the Kukizo people. The exclusive focus on Kukizo not only highlights government's acquiescence to the unconstitutional diktat of Arambai Tangle on 24 but categorically presents its undesirable communal centric pathological nature. The untoward development in the State Assembly amplifies the importance of Kukizo demand for constitutional safeguards being addressed by government of India at the earliest in the interest of communal harmony and peace. The Chief Minister has failed to control his success on his maintain militants and armed milit militias from breaching the rules of law by terrorizing the civilians, openly brandizing looted arms from the state police armories, and his reluctance to take action against them. This situation calls for immediate declaration of all valley districts as disturbed areas and imposition of Armed Forces Special Power Act AFSPA in all 10 police stations in the valley districts to aid in curtailing terror act of state-sponsored pro programs. Furthermore, the Committee on Tribal Unity will impose 24 hours total shutdown in Kampopi district, which effect from 10 a.m. of 4th March till 10 a.m. of 5th March 2024. Public rally will be held on the same day to demonstrate resentment over the derogatory resolution of the Manipur Legislative Assembly. The Committee on Tribal Unity is a stone to hear the resolution passed by the Manipur Legislative Assembly to abrogate the Sioux Agreement with KN on UPF, which, which clearly emphasized that the Maite community and Maite centric government are against peace to prevail in the state since Sioux has been signed to bring peace. So the breakdown of law and order in the valley can be seen clearly and reimposition of AUSPA in all the 19 police stations in the valley district is needed to aid in curtailing terror act of state sponsored programs therefore the committee on tribal unity 
decided to impose 24-hour total shutdown in Kampobi district with effect from 10 a.m. of 4th March till 10 a.m. of 5th March. Public rally will also be held on the same day to demonstrate resentment over the derogatory resolutions of the Manipur Legislative Assembly. A very unfortunate incident occurs at Zhongzhang Tech Frontline Post yesterday, leading to the death of one volunteer and two heavy casualties. In connection to that, the JP organized a burial program for the deceased, identified as Pao Milun Hauki, son of El Zam Hulun Hauki, 35 years, hailing from Kung Pi Nausen village under Kang Wai Subdivision. The program started at around 2 p.m. in the evening and is carried out with utmost tribute and honor by his comrades and the whole Kukizo community at Martyrs Park, Seiken Village. Pao Milon Hauke belonged to UTV Section 13 First Batch and he is the 19th martyr to be buried at Martyrs Park at Seiken Village. Lian Zalal, JPO Secretary, led the solemn burial program, and in his speech he said that life and death are not in our hands but in the hand of God, and since it's the program of God, we should accept his departure and move on with our lives and do not grieve too long so that he can rest in peace and not worry about us. His near and dear ones should be proud of him for his heroic death, he added. Besides him, many other martyrs were also laid to rest, and he's the 19th martyr who's laid to rest here at the Martyrs Park with tribute. He father and caressed the comrades of the deceased, saying they still have the life to fight for the cause of their people and nation, so they should be brave and fight without wavering. On behalf of the JPO, he covered the dead body with a traditional cookies of salt. The speech was followed by a gun salute from Palmin from Pao Milun Haukip comrades, and after that, Pastor Let Kolal Hang Singh took over the burial program. Before the burial proceeds, he shared few words to the family of the deceased as well as his comrades. The pastor also quoted from T.S. Eloyd, saying, That is like a stranger and we don't know when we will meet it, so we must always prepare ourselves and, life, and live our lives contentedly so we don't have to regret it. He also quoted from the book of John. After his speech, the burial program was conducted solemnly. The whole tribe grieves over the deceased and sends their consolation message to the deceased family. Reporting for TC Network, I am Tingnei Tim Hokip and I'm here with my crew members and my videographer, Mr. Sisi Mangte. And today we are here to cover the burial program of Mr. Pao Min Lun Hokip, son of El Zam Hulun Hokip from Kung Pinao Sen Village, Kang Wai Subdivision. He is a member of the UTV Section 13 First Badge. In an unfortunate incident which occurred at his duty place at Zhou Zhang Tek, he passed away while two of his friends or two of his comrades sustained serious injuries and is now and are now admitted at the hospital as we can see many people have come to give tribute to the deceased and the whole cookie donation grief over his death over his heroic death the jpo led the burial program and he was buried by and the burial ceremony was conducted by pastor let Hulal hang singh uh, pastor of sinai village and these murder burial programs are all under the in charge of the jpo so now we would like to ask few questions to the jpo uh, in regards to all this uh, situations and matters in regards to the brave martyr who was buried today we would like to ask the uh, organization in church executive members to uh, give us to, to answer some questions regarding uh, his dad my first question will be sir can you give us a brief uh, detail or a brief account about the uh, bio data of the disease uh, yeah the person or brave martyr who is buried today is Mr. Pao Min Lun Haukip, 35 years and he was the accidentally injured uh, in the duty post in the front line along with his two friends. Uh, those two injured, his friends were now uh, get a treatment in the district hospital and unfortunately Pao Min Lun Haukip was expired on the spot itself. 
My next question is, what are the works initiated by the JPO in regards to this situation? Yeah, actually, JPO is not a new organization uh, set up due to this uh, conflict. Uh, it is time uh, immemorial from our forefathers that we did the uh, altruism work, uh, the philanthropic work in a society. Uh, long, long decades back, yeah, our grandparents, in times of uh, need of help to anyone, uh, like uh, even in natural calamities happened uh, due to flood or some due to some havoc or some uh, maybe uh, different things, uh, problem faced by the villagers or uh, a community, we do a helping hand without any charges. This is the uh, philanthropic deal we inherited from our forefathers. So this time also the joint philanthropic organization, which is comprised of uh, 10 different communities uh, among the cookies, like the Mar and the Tado cookie speaking, and the Vaipe, the YPA, uh, Paite, Simte, Zhou, Tangkal, Tidimchin. All of us joined together in one hand so that our works would be more stronger, no? So uh, among this 10 organization, we united club together and formed this JPO. Even during the three bills also, uh, way back in 1990, something like that, if I am not mistaken. So this time also the JPO is taking over the uh, uh, help of others. Right now, uh, there is a big burden we are having. We look after more than 18,000 uh, internally displaced persons who are coming from outside uh, Lamka district. And right now they are put in RC uh, relief camp. Uh, with the district administration, we work together to give their livelihood, to give their basic needs like uh, food and clothing and those things. And after all, we look after the uh, medical treatment of uh, IDPs and even those persons who are injured in the front line. And most importantly, uh, it is our inherited uh, tradition that we are taking uh, care of uh, the dead bodies, which we need to do the farewell. So any person, not only this, due to this conflict, uh, if there are any thing the JPO can do, uh, to give a final right. Uh, this is the works of the JPO. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you. District Social Workers Association writes to the Prime Minister of India through the Deputy Commissioner Charachanpur Manipur regarding high-level experts bought inquiry over the 6,000 automatic government weapons loaded in the month of May 2023 by the Mayday terrorists and legal necessary actions thereof. The letter signed by Zhang Hulam Hauki, President, District Social Workers Association, Jurachanpur, Manipur, and James Kamkhyan Swan, Secretary, District Social Workers Association, Jurachanpur, Manipur, state that, unlike all the previous Chief Minister of Manipur, the present Chief Minister, N. Biren Singh, is a political politician from the majority community, declared war upon the minority community, particularly the Kukizo of Manipur, as a result of which, 6,000 automatic weapons of the state government have been looted and the Arambai Tengal and Meite Lipun attacked the Kukizo community by using those looted weapons. Thousands of helpless Kukizo displaced and hundreds of their villages were burned and their belongings set ablaze by using the state looted weapons. Besides hundreds of innocent people, including the state government employees, brutally killed and women of different ages gang raped, besides two women and one wounded baby were born alive in an ambulance before reaching the hospital. Another boy named David Tick was beheaded and was posted on the fence on the fencing stand that all these happenings met by the Arambai Tengal, Meite Lipun and Meite Terroris. The letter further asks how and why the concerned home department or chief ministers were still silent without appropriate action against and allow the issue to use the looted weapons to use them freely, which is deadly against the law of the land. 
The district social workers, peace-loving associations, deeply concerned why the looted weapons were still used for fighting against the minority Kukizo community, and why the Home Department under the Chief Minister is still a silent spectator of the issue. If the government is not taking immediate necessary action against the looters and the person concerned who have handed over the weapons, the victims, the minor Kukizo communities shall suffer vigorously. Schools in Moret face severe breakdown since the onset of the conflict on November last year. Our correspondents at Moret visited the local schools today and made a report that the number of students enrolling in the local run schools has tremendously decreased this year since most of the parents out of fear and concern admit their students in schools at other districts like Chorachanpur. Moreover, due to the non-relaxation of curfew, the students face many hardships since they had to go to school only during the curfew relaxation hours and had to rush back to their homes before the hours end, which also caused many unwanted problems for the students and parents as well. Moreover, the DC of Technopol had promised to relax the curfew when schooling begins, but till now he had not relaxed the curfew. The DC is once again reminded to relax the curfew for the students' normal education. Bethel High School's principal also told the media that, in regards to the financial crisis faced by the public due to the ongoing conflicts, the students are welcome to school even without prior admissions, which they can pay in the later months when their parents are in position to do so. Uh, this uh, I would like to request to our uh, DC, the Nopa district, that uh, sometime back um, in February, the Mopsa Moray Private School Teachers Associations, uh, Christian, Engineers, Ketri, and some of them had met. And their DC had already um, assured when school begins, then the curfew will be relaxed. Mm. Until now, not yet relaxed. It's not happening. Mm. Yeah, not happened. And not materialized, to mm. say. And after that, also, we, the school heads, we meet uh, uh, SP Tenopal. And we request the same. Mm. And till today, we suffer a lot. Our children, since they came empty stomach without eating, or sometimes they uh, they used to take whatever available in the ho hotels, mm. and this affect their health. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Manipur on Friday tabled a bill proposing to make using names of place not authorized by state government a punishable offense with imprisonment up to three years and penalty up to rupees two lakh. As per Times of India, the Manipur Names of Places Bill 2024, which was tabled by Chief Minister N. Biren Singh, states that there have been multiple instances of use of unauthorized names of places by certain individuals or groups of people or organizations with a possible malefite intent, which had the potential to create confusion in the administration and disturb the social harmony in the state. The use of unauthorized names of places also creates certain administrative challenges for government officials at the time of discharging their duties, the bill adds. The proposed legislation comes in the wake of the ongoing conflict between two communities of the state, during which the warring groups were seen renaming places in an apparent bid to claim rights over each other's spaces. The bill has proposed setting up of a seven-member place names committee to be headed by a chairperson who will be appointed by state government from among retired old Indian service officers below the age of 65 years. Only this committee will recommend naming or altering of the name of a place to the state government. The bill's father states that the proposed law aims to establish an institutional mechanism for naming of places and for laying down procedures for giving names to places or altering them. The Election Commission of India has not, not has notified a scheme for internally displaced persons of Manipur to vote at their relief games, the state chief electoral officer Pradeep Kumarja announced on Friday. As per the Hindu, more than 60,000 people were displaced within weeks of the ethnic violence that broke out on May 3, 2023. 
Most of them are lodged in relief camps. Another 9,000 are taking shelter in Mizoram. An ECI statement said that the displaced electors were still enrolled at the places where they were ordinary residents before the conflict started. After due consultations with the central and state governments, it was decided that these electors would continue to be born on the electoral rolls of the assembly and parliamentary constituencies concerned in Manipur, it said. Referring to past precedent of similar nature, the ECI said the internally displaced electors would be provided with the facility to vote at special polling stations to be set up in the relief camps. In order to identify the specified voters, the eligible voters staying in the relief camps or otherwise staying with relatives or friends be given the option to elicit the choice of special polling station where they would like to cast their vote. It may suffice if the head of the family or any senior member of the family gives intimation in respect of all the family members and it may not be necessary to collect such information from each elector, the ECI statement said. Although the right to vote is an individual right, the gathering of such information from the head of the family would not militate against the individual's rights to vote at the time of election as the voter concerned will have to exercise the vote individually after satisfying the polling staff of her or his identity, the ECI said. An individual voter, if without any family member staying with her or him at the relief camp, may submit her or his own ID form, it said. The election in the special polling stations will be conducted by using separate EVMS and all rules, directions, and instructions applicable to the conduct of the poll of the original polling station will also apply at the special polling stations. The ECI said the contesting candidates would be informed in writing about the location of special polling stations with a request to depute their polling agents if they wish to witness the polling process at the special polling stations. For poll day, the candidates shall authorize polling agents to be present at its special polling station. Polls shall be conducted under webcasting. In case where webcasting is not feasible, still videography will be carried out, the ECI said. The Bongbal Village Authority, Singhat Subdivision, Chorachanpur, clarifies on the misinformation regarding recovery of arms and bombs in Bongbal Village on Manipur, AIR Infal News of 1st March 2024. In its clarification note, the Bongbal Village Authority states that recent misinformation calculating about the alleged recovery of arms and bombs in Bongbal Village. Contrary to these claims, the Bongbal Village Authority again made it clear that no such incident has occurred and there is no credible evidence to support these rumors. It is crucial to rely on accurate information from reputable sources to avoid unnecessary panic or misinformation. Our priority is to ensure the safety and well-being of the community and we assure that local authorities are actively monitoring the situation, added the clarification note. The Bongbal Village Authority condemned all these forms of mischievous, malefied and informs that one should not be entertained by this kind of misinformation. The 36 Battalion Assam Rifles Lamka headquarters under the aegis of Inspector General Assam Rifles Sao conducted a mega medical and dental camp at Gelmol Turachanpur today. The mega medical camp aims to establish stronger and strengthen the existing relationship with the locals to prevail peace and normalcy in the state. Maintaining peace and harmony in the state being one of the Assam Rifles' motifs, the Mega Medical Camp was organized in order to ensure healthy environment. Around 295 villagers of which 74 male, 104 female, and 73 children turned up for the checkup. Some physically challenged persons also came for the checkup. Officials of 36 AR Unit Hospital Medical Team who conducted the Mega Medical Camp were Commandant CMO Dr. Lamin Tang Singson, Captain Pradeep Yadav, Assistant Commandant Sri Rab Krishna, Dr. Alex Tangzalet Tautang, PMR Specialist, District Hospital, 
Lanka and Dr. Kambiak de Tombing, assistant professor, child specialist, where 44 were dental patients. The Assam Rifles not only checked the villagers' illness but also distributed medicines free of cost. Apart from officials of 36 AR Unit Hospital Medical Team, Commandant Jahat Tiwari Officer Commanding 14 DUAR and his staff also took part and assist the team throughout the Mega Medical Camp. Brigadier Michael D. Souza, Commander 27 Sector AR, also visited the camp. On behalf of the Galmol Village Authority, Secretary Ginmintang presented Sai Pi Hoop, a traditional sold to the Kuki to Commander and Commanding Officers as a gesture of appreciation. As part of the camp, interaction program with the villages was also organized regarding healthy lifestyle. Mention may be met that the Assam Rifles had also done similar camp for children at SHOI, SHOB Foundation and many other far-flung villages as well. Laurembam Rameswar Mitei, MLA of Kairau Assembly Constituency in Manipur, has proposed a shoot at sight policy against illegal immigrants from Myanmar. He alleges that these immigrants exploit loopholes in the system to obtain voter cards and establish themselves in Manipur by marrying locals. He stresses on the need for effective implementation of the National Register of Citizens (NRC) and stricter surveillance measures to curb this issue. He also urges the government and indigenous communities to play an active role in preventing illegal immigration and land encroachment. The MLA further highlighted the potential national security threat posed by the influx of undocumented immigrants and called for the implementation of a straight law to address the issue. In the ongoing Manipur Assembly session, the Kairau MLA expressed concern about illegal immigrants in his constituency. He claimed that people from Mizoram using other cards have migrated to Manipur and registered on the voter list. He alleges that these immigrants in turn brought in more Im illegal immigrants from Burma. The MLS stressed the need for effective implementation of the National Register of Citizens and RC to curb such issues. He also highlighted that diverse communities residing in his constituency and alleged that some immigrants have managed to obtain other cards and voter list registration through marriage to local residents. He urged the government to take strict action against illegal immigration, suggesting measures such as biometric surveillance and the enactment of specific policies. The MLA also called on indigenous communities and fellow MLAs to play an active role in preventing illegal immigration and land encroachment. The MLA recently expressed concerns over the growing number of illegal immigrants in the valley. He alleges that these immigrants were erecting bunkers in the peripheral areas, taking advantage of the suspension of operation. He emphasized the need for Vaili MLAs to remain vigilant about the entry of immigrants and proactively identify them. The MLA also shared an incident from Infalways where a local woman married a Kuki militant and amassed large tracts of paddy land. He warned that indigenous communities are being increasingly displaced by these immigrants. He urged the Naga community to play a significant role in preventing illegal immigration and land encroachment. The MLA father demanded the government to implement strict measures against illegal immigrants, including a shoot at sight policy. He stressed the need for practical steps to curtail illegal immigration beyond merely singing and sending resolution for implementation. He recalled the previous government's action against the Maitei community, where around 3,600 were killed, including 1,500 in fact encounters. He, pos he posited that a shoot at sight policy could significantly address the illegal immigration issue. The MLA highlights the potential threat poses by illegal immigration to national security. He suggests that the influx of undocumented immigrants could strain resources and disrupt the demographic balance of the state. Rameswar Mite draws a parallel to the efforts undertaken by the state government and security forces to control insurgency in Manipur, which involve encounters in extreme situations.
The MLA advocates for the implementation of a stringent law to address the issue of Ill illegal immigration. He even proposes a controversial measure, granting security forces the authority to use shoot at sight tactics against illegal immigrants. In light of the recent arrest of Mistress Esther Laran Dinmo, currently residing in Demring, Madanring, Silong, for her alleged involvement in illegal drugs peddling, which was reported in local newspaper dated 1st March 2024, the Kukizo Anti Drug Committee, Megalaya, strongly condemned her involvement in such illegal activities. A notice signed by Go Khan Lianzhou, convener, KZADCM and Mang Min Tang Haukip, Secretary, KZADCM, states as per the resolution adopted by Unao Joint Committee meeting dated 10 7, and the resolutions adopted by KZADCM meeting dated 15 7, The following punishment or actions are hereby imposed upon Mistress Esther Lar Ramdinmo and her family. Social boycott or outcast by all by all organizations, societies under Kukizo community in Meghalaya, with effect from the death of issue of this notice. Expulsion of the family members of the arrested person from Meghalaya state within one week from death of issue of this notice. Expulsion of the arrested person from Meghalaya state within one week from the death of release from jail if released on bail. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.